Do you experience bloating, constipation, or abdominal pain that seems to have no clear cause? These could be related to the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or hypermobility spectrum disorder. In this video, I'll break down the most common gastrointestinal complications of Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders, why they happen, and what you can do to manage them. I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, a medical geneticist who has taken care of people with hereditary disorders of connective tissue like EDS and HSD for over 40 years, and I've seen how life-changing it can be to address these symptoms properly. So why do HSD and EDS affect the GI tract? Connective tissue is found in literally every organ system in the body, and the GI tract is no exception. So the GI tract is aligned with connective tissue that supports digestion and supports motility. And when the connective tissue is weak or faulty, it can lead to dysfunction in the GI tract. Another factor that can influence the performance of the GI tract in EDS and HSD is the autonomic nervous system. Problems with the autonomic nervous system, which are common in EDS and HSD, can disrupt the signals that control GI motility, and it can lead to symptoms like slow digestion, constipation. We also know that some people with EDS and HSD have food intolerances related to mast cell dysfunction or mast cell activation. So this can also contribute to GI dysfunction because it can lead to abdominal pain, gas, and bloating after eating. Some of the most common gastrointestinal symptoms in EDS and HSD include acid reflux, slow emptying of the stomach or gastroparesis, and there are also problems with nausea and early fullness. Problems with the lower GI tract can include chronic constipation, and some people report that their chronic constipation actually alternates with diarrhea, so it can go back and forth. People also report issues with bloating and chronic abdominal pain. There's a lot of overlap with autonomic dysfunction, as I mentioned. So people who have orthostatic intolerance and POTS and MCAS are also very likely to have issues with the GI tract. So because these symptoms are so prevalent and they're involving so many different organ systems, it is not a uncommon for people to go a very long time before the underlying cause is recognized. So these symptoms can have really major impacts on daily life. If you're not getting enough food, enough calories in every day, your energy levels may be low. If you've got chronic abdominal pain, gas, and bloating, this may really impact your ability to socialize and to work in the way that you want to. It can lead to isolation. It can lead to nutritional deficiencies. There's a huge emotional toll of unpredictable GI symptoms. It's not just the physical issues. It can just be emotionally exhausting to navigate these challenges every day. So it's really important to try to understand the underlying cause and to address them in the best possible way. Some strategies for dealing with some of these issues, some dietary interventions may be helpful. If mast cells are underlying the some GI symptoms, then addressing it with a lower histamine diet may be helpful. And tr certainly treating the mast cells is very, very important in that situation. People who have a gastroparesis or slow emptying of the stomach may do better with smaller, more frequent meals in order to ease digestion. Many people find that caffeine and alcohol are trigger foods, and you want to sort of recognize what those triggers are for you and try to avoid them. 
Now, there are a number of medications that will help improve the GI motility. We call those prokinetic medications. There are antispasmodic medications, so the medications that stop the spasm of the GI tract, and those can also be very helpful. So it's really important to be working with a gastroenterologist who understands the GI issues related to EBS and HSD. Digest enzymes, magnesium, and probiotics may also be very helpful. And so these can be incorporated into the overall strategy for management of GI complaints. These GI issues can be very isolating, as I mentioned earlier. So it's really important to connect online or with your local support groups to find shared tips and get emotional encouragement. The Ehlers-Danlos Society at ehlers-danlos.com has an enormous number of resources out there to help you navigate this journey. So in summary, gastrointestinal complications are very common in EDS and HSD, but with the right strategies, they can be managed effectively. And remember, you do not have to face this alone. If this video has been helpful for you in understanding your symptoms, please give me a like and subscribe for more resources on managing EDS and HSD. If you have experienced GI issues related to EDS or HSD, share your story in the comments. It might help someone else. Thanks so much for sharing this time with me, and I wish you the very best on your journey.